Here's our cheat sheet for graphing the parent functions of cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So I might show it in here, but I'm not going to make us do the, the lecture problems or the homework problems of, co, of cotangent. So cosecant, the function would be like this, f of x is the cosecant of x. And a lot of books have explanations on how to graph cosecant of x. I'm telling you, they're all confusing. They're all, they're all looking for various multiples of different parts of pi. It, it's confusing. Nobody remembers it. I'm going to show you how I graph it. I take a little bit of time out of my life, and I think about the reciprocal of cosecant. That's why these are called reciprocal functions, actually, if you look up... Uh, well, he didn't put it up there, but in the, in the lecture, you'll see the words reciprocal. Because remember when we had sine of theta was something? Remember that? How would I calculate cosecant of that same angle? Uh, 1 over sine of theta? Well, hold on, but if I already have the answer, A over B, what do we do to get the new answer? Uh, reciprocal. Oh. What do we do? We flip it, right? Yeah, B over A. That's a reciprocal, which is why sine and cosecant are reciprocal functions. I like what Jonathan said, too. I said, what was sine of theta? And Jonathan said, 1 over cosecant of theta. Well, that's absolutely true. You can also say, what is cosecant of theta? It is 1 over sine of theta. So the reciprocals. So what I do, I spend time graphing the reciprocal. Y equals the sine of theta. That is the reciprocal function for cosecant. I didn't say they're equal. They're two different functions, but they're related. So you should be really good at graphing Y is sine of theta or Y is sine of X, whatever letter you want to use. Because we all know that the amplitude is what? One. And the period is what? Two pi. Two pi. Okay. So if I graph a, uh, a period of this, it has to start here at the zero because I'm not shifting left to right, am I? No. Nope. No, I'm not. So I'm going to start here. And then it has to end how long ago or how long in the future or how long in the past? Negative two pi. I can go two pi, negative two pi. So I'm going to put the end point. This is not part of the graph. This just helps me graph. Where's the midline if I don't shift up or down? Uh, the, one or origin. The, the origin or the x-axis? Oh, the whole x-axis. The whole x-axis is the midline. So my method is always dividing in four because beautiful things happen every one-fourth of the way. Beautiful things happen to sine and cosine every one-fourth of the way. So I'm going to take a second and say pi must be half, right? Pi over 2, which is two tick marks, must be half. So every two tick marks was dividing it because it was 8 across, if you think about it. If you count the number of units, it's 8 all the way to 2 pi. So I go 2, I go 2, I go 2 more. So if you're using this grid already labeled, that's the way to go. Matter of fact, I gave you the same grid on your quiz, but I took off the numbers to give you freedom. Very few people did what Jonathan did. John decided to make, Jonathan decided to make the whole thing 0 to pi. The okay, but it was legal. But as long as he labeled it, I was fine. The problem with some of you guys, your pictures did not match 0 to 2 pi. I don't know what, you're, what you were going to. So if you didn't label your X numbers, at least a couple of them, so I know what you're counting by, I, you lost five points per graph. Okay? If the period was pi, it would be logical to add that pi, right? Yeah, if the period was pi, it makes sense to go to pi. But I don't know if that was true or not. I'm trying to remember. I had some really dumb graphs. Yeah. You you had more unique, but they were all right. <laughs> they were they were right. 
but I had to go out of my way to figure out if they were starting and ending okay. Okay, so here goes. Oh, I had a, I had a, I had an extra credit question I asked two A, and nobody could answer it. Why do I divide by four? Why do I do that? I guess there's four parts of a, like, there's a maximum, minimum, and, and then where it intersects. Yes, exactly. So the first one, it goes into the top and Okay, so I guess between the two of you, you both get extra credit. So you each can send me a message. What's the amplitude, did you say? I hate amplitudes of one because on your paper, it's so small. You can't zoom in on your paper. The other day, I was writing on a tablet, I mean, a regular paper tablet. I literally did this. I tapped it. A paper tablet? Yeah, I did. Like a pen and paper? Yeah. <laughs> that was so dumb. I felt so, what happened? And then we go down one. And the window that I'm graphing for one cycle, I'm going to zoom in on the window, is between the red lines and the green lines. So just for kicks... This is the window that I care about right now. You understand? You understand why that's my window I care about right now? The window that I'm graphing one cycle in has to be in this window right here. Between the max and the min, and between the zero and the two pi. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to uh, a different color that I've never used for you guys before. I'm gonna go to pink. So if I'm doing a sine curve, here's, here's really what's going on. Every single line that I drew gets a dot. Sine curve starts here at the origin, true? Yeah. And, and earlier today, somebody told me, because we weren't on the origin, they said it starts on the midline. It does start on the midline. The midline is zero. Then this sign has to go up. So the next dot goes on the yellow line. Where? Right above the yellow. Above the yellow? Yeah, the first hit. You remember? Or on the yellow? No. Wait, are we doing it in terms of sign? No. Oh, that's sign. Above the oh. dot. Yeah, above the first one. Above the first dot on the yellow line. Oh, okay. Because it reaches yeah. its uh, maximum. And where does the next one go? Okay, let's see the midline. On the midline again. And then it intersects the yellow line. And then it goes to the third one at the very bottom. And the third one goes down, yeah. Okay, I love it, guys. You guys deserve those points. So here's my one cycle. No teepees allowed. I had students do this. Crazy, drove me nuts. Straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. Business. All right, real quick, we're going to do the cotangent. Now. I know you, you forgot how to do tangent, but I'm going to graph f of x is the cotangent of x. And I'm, for all practical purposes, I'm using y equals the tangent graph to, to find it. Okay, So remember what we said. Tangent started at 0, 0, right here. And then I said on each side, I have to have an asymptote, and that means... I need to find out what the period is because the period, I got to cut it in half and go left half, go right half. What's the period of the regular tangent? Um, it's two pi, no, one pi divided by B. What is my B? Oh, then it's just going to be a pi. So the distance from the right to the left have to add up to pi of that dot. So how much do I go to get half a pi? Huh? Oh, I should have done pi over 4 for my x scale. Because that's why it looks stretched. Uh. Yeah. So if I go 2 to the right, 2 to the left, that's the distance. So I'm going to put my asymptote right here and right here. Does that make sense? Yep. And I know a point on this graph has to be on the midline. And it rises to the uh, right. Rises to the right, falls to the left. 
Now, what happens for the uh, cotangent, I think the asymptote gets the point of the cotangent. The, so let me change my color again to my pink. So now, in cotangent, the asymptote gets the point, and the period still is pi. So now I got to go 2 pi to the right and 2 pi to the left. And it's the same thing on this one, too. Look at So I go 2 pi to the left, 1, 2, that's 2 pi. Make my asymptote here. 2 pi to the right, which happens to be the... Uh, x, the y-axis, and then 2 pi takes me to pi. Now get this. Uh, the dots are already there. So with black, I'm going to go to the dot. The only difference is I don't rise to the right. I fall to the right. And I rise to the left. Go to the next dot. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this time I rise to the left and I fall to the right. There is two pictures of cotangent. You see how the tangent orange one is in the middle of both of them? And you can do that in your calculator and show that. And I know you feel like, wow, I am so glad we learned to do this. It, well, you can get rid of all the other stuff. You know, if you want to use pencil... You can always take your eraser and go back and erase everything that you didn't need. Like, I didn't need anything that was purple. Or, I mean, green, I mean, orange. What am I saying? There you go. There's your graph. That's really nice. No. <laughs> okay, rule. New rule. Bathroom means you turn in your phone and it stays up there to the rest of the period. You turn in your phone up there in the caddy because you didn't turn it in to begin with anyway. And you were supposed to. Yeah, we've getting, we're getting emails from administrators that uh, kids are walking the hall with phones. All right. Really quick. Back to the left. The, the domain is really complicated because you have to answer all the X's except for where the asymptotes. Where are the asymptotes on this cosecant? Oh, okay. So the domain would be all reals. All, come on, draw, buddy. Draw. There he is. All reals except whole multiples of pi. What about the range? All reals. Oh, we know. All reals except the middle. Yeah. So, so I'm going to do it like this. Negative infinity all the way to negative 1, union 1, 2, infinity. Wasn't there a shorter way to write that? I don't know. X-intercepts. Are there any X-intercepts on the uh, black graph? No. Not on the parent. None. Are there any Y-intercepts on the X no. graph? None. Are there any asymptotes? Yes. They're multi multiples of what? Of whole number of pi. What's the amplitude for this? How high will it go? Huh? But also, aren't the asymptotes also um, one and negative one? Because it just doesn't go. Oh, wait, no, it's actually good. What's the uh, amplitude? There is one and negative one. No amplitude. And the period was, in this case? Was it? It, this was 2 pi. Hmm. Yes, it's 2 pi. Thank you. I was thinking. Nice job. Oh, there's okay. no y-intercepts either. No, there was not on that one unless we shift up or down, okay? Yeah. If you shift up or down and left and right, deals are off, okay? All right, domain on the secant. Oh, uh, the Is it the same? Uh, check this out. This was a half a pi, so it was 1 pi over 2. 
Then I got to count two more. That's three pi over two. The next one would be uh, one, two, five pi over two. Want to change your answer? All reals. One, three, and five are even? All reals except odd multiples, thank you, Adam, of pi over two. What's the range? I don't know. I don't want to hurt my brain trying to. Range? It's the same, negative infinity to a negative one. Then we skip it, union to one to infinity. Were there any x-intercepts this time? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. There's none. Were there any y-intercepts this yes, time? Yes. Where? Um, the very first one that I drew, right? No, zero, zero. Zero, one. Zero, one. Oh, okay. You got me. Well, are there any asymptotes? Yes. Odd multiples of pi over two. Was there an amplitude? None. Nope. And how about period? It was just like the other one, yeah. I got to get him to come in and fix my TV. I don't know why it changed its. Uh... Like scroll up. Oh, you sit down. Are we not going to do any of the transformations? Oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll do one or two. Ooh. I'm only giving you four problems for homework, so. Oh, that's nice. All multiples of pi over two. All, all reals except for odd multiples of pi over two. Over here? It was all reals except whole number of pi's. One pi, two pi, three pi, negative three, <laughs> u pi. All right, look at the cotangent. What's the domain look like? Oh. All reals. Oh. It's all X's, right? So it's all yeah, except for what? Um, multiples of pi? Or uh, I don't know. Are they multiples of pi? Well, that's where the asymptote is. Okay, I have one at zero. I have one at zero pi. I have one at one pi. I have one at negative one pi. I'll have one at, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Did I miscount wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. I was kind of right one. Between the, uh, amp the acidos, one, two, Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think you were right, Adam. All except whole multiples of pi. And this only applies to the parent, guys. Once we start putting Bs and shifting, stuff changes. Range, how high will it go? How low will it go? <laughs> that is negative infinity to infinity. I was going to say, well, so we want to let Emma in or do we just wave at her? We were just going to wave at you. Hi, Emma. X intercepts, are there any? Yeah. Yeah. I see two of them. Well, there's a lot, but the pattern is every half pi. Isn't it? it is every half pi. All multiples of pi over 2 gets a. Gets oh that's not true, no because zero didn't get it. That's a one. The next one's not going to occur until three. Uh, three four. Hold on here. Three, one seconds. two one two. It's going to occur here. Which is three seconds. That is three over two. That's odd. Odd. odd odd multiples of pi. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, odd, odd. And this is how they actually teach you to graph it in the textbooks. Just know these things. I'll be honest with you. I don't really care about all this stuff that much. I'll fix that. You're going to have the answer to those in 
Well, I, I'm not making the test. But I heard Mr. Dottery say to Mr. Pemberton, how about we just have the test of sines and cosines? So I, I think I think that's all he's going to put on it. Because he, he doesn't realize that my kids will be able to do anything that I teach. He doesn't realize that. So Y intercept, are there any? The asymptote is, uh, is, yeah. Are there any x-intercepts? Uh, wait, yeah, we don't done x-intercepts. Aren't they the odd multiples of pi over 2? Yes. Odd multiples of pi over 2. Was there an amplitude? No. Is there a period? Um, no, one pi. One it was one pi. It said odd multiples of pi over 2. Let's go back to the left again and see what else they asked us for. Transformations. If you see a, this was a cosecant. All right, here it goes. Y equals a cosecant of B, parenthesis, X minus H plus K. Wait, can you? A cosecant of B times X minus H plus K. Now this is cosecant. So what's the amplitude? Um, A. Wait. None. There's none. None. Yeah, we said there was none. What's the period? 2 pi over B. Yes, the period will still be 2 pi over B. Was there a horizontal phase shift? The H is, right? The H is your horizontal phase shift. And it goes left. We can't see it. Okay. That's why I got to get Mark to fix that. Left, if it is a plus H. Right, if it's a minus H, right? Oh, it's still backwards in there. Because if it has a minus sign, if the number is negative, we'll turn positive, so it's inverted. It's a, uh, you just have to pay attention to the minus sign. That's why memorizing something is really important. Yeah, and the vertical shift is the what? Um, plus or minus k. Plus or minus k, depending on up or down, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's any different for the secant graph? No, nope, besides the changing the cosecant to secant. No. Yeah, it's all the same. It's all the same. Y equals a secant of b times x minus h plus k. Everything's the same. I'm not going to write it again. I'm just going to write same. Tangent. Tangents are people, too. They can shift up and down. Y equals A cotangent of B times X minus H plus K. It's, but does anything change? I'm not really sure. I don't want to be... The period is pi over B. Instead of pi. Okay, period will be pi over B. That's for sure. There's still... Is there, is there an amplitude? No. No. Anytime a function has vertical asymptotes, it can't have a, a max or min. Hey, sir, why is this one a plus, not an x minus h? I'm sorry. It, is, I always, it should always be minus because we think of the opposite. Yeah. So, you know, we said a plus, a plus h number means to the left. A minus h number means to the right. And the vertical shift is still K. There's your cheat sheet. Very good. Can you do the citation? Yes. Okay, uh, just, just so, information question. so let's go to the lecture notes. Uh, so just a quick question. Yes. You know how it says cotangent of B of X plus H? I mean, minus H, right? Yeah. What if X had a coefficient and a B? Well, we factor the coefficient out. Oh. And it gets... Oh. See, like, if you saw... If you saw a sine of 2x minus 4. And then you have a 2 outside of 1. Plus 2. No, like, not plus 2, like sine. Okay, you have a 2 here. So you factor out a 2 because you always want your x to have a 1. So you'll factor out the 2, making it 2 oh. times 2, which is a 4. x minus 2 plus 2. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Can there not be factoring on like I don't think you're going to see this. Good. Okay. 
Okay. He is saying, hypothetically, I have seen functions where it gives you inside like that. And so you need to have a one there. I mean, you know the B is a five. You know the B is five because it's next to the X. So most people would rewrite this as five times X plus one fifth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Jonathan. All right, let's do number one. This is a cosecant. And what would its period be? I want us to think about y equals 3 halves sine of x. Think that. The period is going to be 2 pi. Period is 2 pi divided by b, which is a 1. 2 pi. Isn't this basically the parent function because amplitude isn't given But it is an amplitude of the sine. So where the horns start will be higher than it was before or lower. He, he said something very good. Why are we worried about the three halves? Well, it makes a difference of where those U's start. So why don't I go ahead, yeah, why don't I go ahead and do my, what is three halves? One and a half. One and a half. One and one and a half. And down one and a half. Tyler, stop it. <laughs> you, know I, you know I can't draw a straight line if my life depended on it. Matter of fact, now you, want me, now you, now you got me very self-conscious. So now I got to go and now I got to go and erase the whole doggone thing. Thanks, Tyler. There probably is a line tool, but I'm not smart enough to know where it is. All right. Does this have a phase shift left or right? So why don't I go ahead and make my starting going to be at the zero? Where would the end be then? May as well make the uh, field goal. There's my rectangle. There, there's my rectangle. It's right here, so that's where I'm, I'm concerned with right now. I need to draw my what function in there? So I'm going to do it quick because I already know you know how to do it. I'm going to cut it in half, cut it in half again, cut it in half again. Where does sign start, on the midline or top or bottom? You start from the middle. Middle. I go up, Tyler, 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 get on task. I was like drawing and graphing. like a maniac, right? He can't even draw straight lines. Let's see him. Let's see him. All right. Now, that's not the answer, is it? The answer is... Where I have x intercepts become the what? Oh, the, um, the asymptotes. Asymptotes. Yeah. Asymptotes. Asymptote. Asymptote. Do you agree with those three asymptotes? I am five seconds away from a perfect picture of cosecant. <laughs> wow. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. It looks like the one we just did, but it's it starts a little higher. True or false? That's it. And it and also goes lower. You have you have this extra space a lot lower, right? A bigger. So your range is going to change because your range is going to go from negative infinity to a negative 1.5, and then from a 1.5 to infinity. Yeah. All right, let's do number. Okay, I'm sorry.
If you understand how to do that problem, you're very blessed. Yay. Where did that Etsy go? I didn't send you back there. I sent you there so I could watch you. I don't know what you're doing back there by yourself. I was busy working for a living. All right. So how many of you feel like you understood this cosecant graph? It didn't go left and right. This is more like lesson 10, isn't it? The sines and cosines that don't go left and right. What? Uh, number two, a secant. Oh, my goodness. It's going to look bad because whenever there's a big number as B, we know the picture, unless you change your grid, gets really skinny. No, I'm going to leave it. If you want to do it on your own over here, you can do your own grid. Period is pi over. Two pi over four. Oh, two pi over four. Ooh, that's yuck. That's one half pi. Pi over two. I recommend relating. That means the cosine finishes up every pi over two. So does it shift left or right, up or down? Uh, shifts just up and down, no left and right yet. Shift? No, it doesn't. Oh. Doesn't go, it doesn't shift up or down. It doesn't shift anywhere. There's no K. I only have an amplitude and a B. And it change, the amplitude no changes, right? The, the amplitude changes, yes. So this thing's still going to start on the, uh, at zero. Unfortunately, the whole cosine, I'm graphing Y is the cosine of X. It's going to be done in, yikes. You know, sir, you can just draw a line under the 2 pi and then put a 4. So that's 2 pi over 4. I'm going to keep it like this because uh, not everybody's going to remember to do all that. I'm just going to relabel. You can do yours, though. So I need a whole cosine that's in here. What's the amplitude? So I got to go up to, so there's my top, and there's my bottom. And now, here's the scary thing. See, I, I can zoom, I think. I got I to gotta divide that box into four pieces. How am I going to do that? I, I have half of it right now. Yeah, so you're going to have to cut this in half. And Tyler's going to tell me how good I did. That wasn't too bad. You did pretty good, actually. That is really mm -hmm. good. There. Yeah, but I cheated. I zoomed in. If I had to do it when it was this small, if I had to do it that small, there's no way I could have gotten it. Yeah, like that. Like you guys. But the, but the saving grace is you guys are young. You have good eyes, good your hands don't shake like an old man does. <laughs>